Its reports that have found solid evidence that the country is working with and supporting the M23 rebel group in the east of the Democratic Republic of Congo are false, unproven, and a tactic to distract from real issues. The reaction came hours after the DR government spokesman, P. Patrick Muyaya, welcomed the work of the UN group, saying that the country hopes that conclusions would soon be reached to put an end to Rwanda's interference and bring back lasting peace. Rwanda has repeatedly denied allegations it supports the M23 rebels. The National Security Council in Ivory Coast says that its embassy in Mali has, for the first time, been allowed to meet the 49 Ivory Coast soldiers being held by Mali. Lalasi reports from Abidjan. Staff from the Ivorian Embassy in Mali were finally able to meet with the 49 soldiers who they say are in good spirit and are bravely enduring their conditions of detention since July 10, according to a statement issued yesterday. Bamako, which is accusing them of being mercenaries, and Abidjan, saying they were unjustly arrested after being deployed to support operations for the United Nations mission in Mali. A new report by the World Health Organization says that the healthy life expectancy in the Africa region has increased on average by 10 years per person between 2000 and 2019. This rise is greater than in any other region of the world during the same period. The report also notes that the disruptive impact of the COVID-19 pandemic could threaten these huge gains. The authorities in Guinea have placed a traveling ban on 26 people as the junta carries out moves to stamp, stamp out corruption. Al Hassan Sila reports from Conakry. Among the 26 banned from leaving the country are a number of political activists and civil servants that the junta says have a case to answer relating to corruption. Mark Teliano, the first minister of agriculture under the Alpha Conde regime, is among the banned. He was accused of diverting millions of U.S. dollars meant for the purchase of agricultural equipment and grains. Mr. Teliano denies the allegation. Supporters of the 26th ban from traveling say it is a witch hunt. Thank you very much. That was Victor Silva there with this uh, roundup. In South Sudan, President Salva Kiir and First Vice President Riyak Mashar have agreed to extend their transitional government by two years. They've been unable to agree on, any, agree, rather, on anything else, but this is not being seen as a good sign. Opposition leaders say it's a way for them to stay in power and delay elections which were to be held after they'd reached certain milestones following a deadly civil war. Thousands of people have died, millions of people have been displaced, and peace is scarce in much of the country. Diplomats from the U.S., the U.K. and Norway, the so-called Troika, showed their displeasure at the postponement by not showing up at a meeting called by the South Sudanese leaders. Suzanne Jumbo is leader of Steps of We 64, which is the pro-peaceful methods and unity movement of South Sudan. What does she make of this extension? The extension by both president and his first vice president um, of their government is nothing but another manifestation of how um, they are working always uh, against the people of South Sudan. Uh, they have not fulfilled, they have not shown any political will towards the full implementation of the peace, of any peace in the country. So this is a backdoor um a shortcut to power to remain and to prolong their stay in power. They say they need to extend because they need the time to draft a permanent constitution and to unify, uh, you know, the army and other forces that are still essentially, you know, following their own political agendas rather than a national agenda. The peace agreement that was signed in November 2018 was very clear in the provisions that is founded in it that they should have been a drafting of the constitution. All these things should have been done that time. They cannot explain to us up to now why they were not able to do that in 2018 up to up to now but what difference would it make if you did give them a little bit more time between 2018 and up to now were there any uh, basic freedom such as freedom to express freedom to assemble uh, guaranteed for the people of south sudan they have there hasn't been any does that need any preparations for there, there's no there's no need for any preparations for that so the, we cannot trust them anymore if they could not provide us with basic freedoms since 2018 there is no way they're going to provide for us the right to to um, draft a constitution that is 
is uh, that will make the the conditions in the country conducive for us to to do any any constitution that is guaranteeing basic freedoms. So to me, th- th- there's no way that they can do this now if they haven't done it before. What are the dangers of this period being extended? There will not be peace. There will not be peace in the country. There will not be any guarantees for freedoms for for, for us to express our, our basic freedoms. Basically, for us keeping quiet about them staying in power, extending their stay in power, it's basically us giving them the leeway or the or the the, the un, sort of unlimited okay from us that they sh- they should continue to oppress us. Now, diplomats, uh, the troika, which has been quite influential in uh, trying to guarantee and bring uh, the, the parties together in, in South Sudan, the, the US, the UK and Norway, declined an invitation to go to a meeting of the two leaders where they were going to make this announcement and tell the world you know, what, what they need to do to, to allow elections to go ahead. Do you see this as a closing of a door by the diplomats that up to now had been trying to bring peace? As much as we are um, happy that the Troika nations have voiced to, to be witnesses to this uh, um, uh, illegal extension of stay in power by, by both leaders and their cronies. It, it, for one, it, it, it's, it's a good thing that they're finally doing it. But on, on another hand, they're the very same uh, nations that have babysat, basically. So, so what do you um, think should happen in order to get elections going and for lasting peace actually to come to South Sudan? We should follow what the national the national dialogue um, platform, which provided in in end of 2020, that uh, for for elections to take place immediately, and that it should be without the two leaders in in that in the in those elections. So both Kir and Riyak Machar should not participate in any elections. Do you think that peace will ever come to South Sudan? Of course, we are normal people. We are. Um, we have yearned for so long for our freedom, for equality and justice for our people, and we have fought and struggled very hard and, and paid selflessly. That's Suzanne Jambo, leader of Steps of We 64, a pro-peaceful methods and unity movement of South Sudan. Now, the funeral of 10 protesters killed during an anti-UN protest in Goma in the Democratic Republic of Congo, Congo has just ended. More than 5,000 people were there at a stadium. It comes four days after a tribute ceremony was held for UN workers who also died during the demonstrations. Protests erupted in the city last week as civilians accused UN peacekeeping mission uh, MONUSCO of failing their mission to stop armed groups from terrorizing civilians. Demands for the agency to leave spread across other parts of the East where more people were killed. Tensions between the DRC and the United Nations have reached an all-time high and the government wants MONUSCO to leave before the end of 2024. Our reporter Joyce Etutu is in Goma and she joins us now. So Joyce, tell us what happened at the funeral today. How did it go? So at the funeral today, as you mentioned there, there were tons and thousands of people who, of course, attended to pay their respects to the 10 people who died. Many of those who lost their lives were actually under the age of 30, with the youngest being a child of 11 years old. So there was music during the ceremony this morning. There were songs of worship. There was religious leaders who spoke about wanting justice and peace. And they also called those who died heroes and there was also a song a south african song called freedom will come tomorrow that was also playing as lots and lots of people danced to that following the funeral there was also a procession throughout the streets of goma where people also attended to once again show their respects but to also demonstrate against monusco's presence in in the country It sounds like people were both celebrating their lives and paying tribute to those who died. But what was the mood uh, um, towards the United Nations and and, and MONUSCO? Well, interestingly, since I've been here, there have been 
tons of Monusco flights going back and forth. But that's simply because it's just too tense for them to go out on the streets using the Monusco branded vehicles. So today out on the streets, there was a lot of police. There was a lot of armed um, guards today ready in case anything were to happen, in case the protesters were to storm over once again um, to the Monusco base here as they did so 10 days ago to protest against their presence. So it was extremely tense and people were holding up banners, they were holding up posters that said bye bye Monusco, that said Monusco is killing. So the general consensus here is that people are still very much angry at their presence in this region. And do we know what the next steps are? Well, civil society, um, the Civil Society Association, as well as activists, they've told us once these burials are over, they're going to go back to protesting. They're going to continue protesting until what they describe as blue helmets, um, which are UN peace peacekeepers until every single one of them leaves this region. That's what that's what they've said. Um, that, that's the warning that they've given. Whether or not that's going to happen is something that we'll definitely be keeping an eye on. And um, do you think that there will be more protests or do you think that once once it's all died down that it will actually just calm down again? I think people here are very angry. We have to remember that Monusco have been in this region for more than for more than 10 years. And this is the first time we've really seen resistance like this. It's the first time we've really seen people take to the streets and people, you know, give their lives for for the cause of wanting them to be removed from the eastern part of the DRC. Okay. So I d- so thank you so much. Joyce said to do there in Goma in the eastern part of the Democratic Republic of Congo.